Hey chat, give me a moment. I need to find music for today. I am thinking... What are you thinking? Hey gamers. I could put it, I could put the stream on the VTuber set. Do you want me to do that? A little bit of cheeky fun. Check this out. Wait. Ba -bom. It's me, the streamer. Do you, do you see this now? Do you see me, chat? It's me, your, your favourite VTuber. Oh, you can see the top of my hair. Hey everyone, I'm just I'm looking for for some some music to play. This this set does not seem to work as well as the last screen, huh? If only my like green screen wouldn't move constantly, huh? Jade Elephant, there he is. That looks fine, doesn't it? For now. All right. Can you hear the music Chris made in the background? The like pling 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 plong rainy music. Do you have that? I'm just browsing YouTube briefly. Um. I'm trying to find something to listen to. Something that won't get me copyright strikes. <laughs> what are you thinking, champ? Um, bloody hell. I'm going to go into my music tab on YouTube and see what, we'll see what it suggests. Toho rock slash metal? Don't know if that's really the vibe I'm going for. How about retrospective 53 minutes, Higan Retour? Ooh. All right, this playlist has some slappers in it by the looks of it. Here we go. It's me, streamer. Can you hear the the, the tooting in the background? Actually, I'd kind of like to listen to um, the retrospective 53 minutes album. That would be nice. Uh, it's not very long. Maybe it's like a Toho music CD. Maybe there's a full, oh, here we go. Okay, this song's about to end, because I'm about to put on a completely different song, so you'll have to forgive me. Ah, it's jarring. Oh well. Is the image of Long Sun, or is it a window looking into his enclosure? I'm trying to think about it. Put him back. Alright. Hey y'all. I actually own a Toho Music CD now, I guess. Because my copy of, um... What's it called? Silent Sinner in Blue came with a music CD. Anyway, hey everyone. I'm gonna make myself massive today, because I'm a... This is my virtual YouTuber art stream. Silent Sinners in Blue. That's right. How are you all? It's been, it's been a few weeks since we've done a Toho or a Woho stream, hasn't it? You've got my fluffy gloves on today. Although it means I have like no mouse control. Actually, you can see my mouse, can't you? That's fine. All right, let me quickly fill this back with something dark. 
What is... I've been pressing G. Is it G for fill? Paint bucket. Yeah. Programmer mittens. That's right. These are my programmer mittens. The plan for today... If you can hear me okay, if we've done all the setup. The plan for today is to write up a... Holy I'm actually going to take them off. I need to be able to, like, use my hands. Hey, Bowser. The plan for today is to write up some loose, like, design document for Woho, and I'm doing it in a Um, I know there's, like, a bunch of different tools you can use, like, Obsidian and whatever to... Bloody hell. To do the same sort of thing. But I, I want to do it in a Sprite. You know, if we make any little little doodles, I'd like to be able to reference them later. And maybe we'll come up with, like, a palette and stuff. I don't know. This'll do. But yeah, like, the one of the issues I had with, uh, with Woho originally was that there was basically no... There was no document to look at to see what to do next. I had, like, a little text file that said, like, you know, do this and then uh, do this. But it wasn't particularly up to date. And we had this one picture somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. Woho... Woho example? I can't be up. What was the folder called? Project Woho Master? S data? Oh, here we go. We had this one image. Oh, where is it? It's one of these, isn't it? We had like a design document. Maybe I didn't have it in data. Maybe I had it stored on my pictures somewhere. Alright, I don't see it. We'd like vaguely based out like what levels we were going to have and like what bosses were going to be at the end of each level, but I don't know where that file's gone. You're pooped. You decide to on the agreement with your friend and follow them to the gym even though you're six and now you have even more head mush. That's stupid. Do you feel good though? You only have one neuron. How are you meant to watch the video and the stream at the same time? You should pause the video and watch the stream. That's it. I've solved the issue. It's genius. <laughs> But yeah, I just want to get that down, because there's a lot of, like, we're having all these conversations about game design and stuff, but, um... I need another layer. What's the... I should learn, like, the bindings as well. Is it Shift-N? Yeah. We have nothing, like, written down, and that kind of annoys me. Let's make this a little transparent so I can see... See the grid. I just don't want the grid to be so glaringly white. So, let's get started. We had, um, this game design before for Woho which was sort of like this Toho clone, right? Where we had like a little screen, we had a main window, and we had some like HUD over here. We had a little player running around here. Boop. We had like enemies that could spawn in, and we had a boss that could spawn in, right? Let's actually let's, let's write this. I don't. I haven't really thought too hard about how I'm going to do all this, but I thought just getting something down on paper would be helpful. And then you can all help me if you want. If you have any ideas of what to include, maybe. We're just going to get some basic stuff written down for now. So what we had, right? Do I have a? Is there a text input in this? I don't think there is. Is there? I can just write with my pencil tool. That's fine. I kind of wish I could like rotate the screen a little bit, like in other art programs. It's weird trying to write angled like this, because I've got my mouse to the side. Anyway, we had, um, let's go pixel one. Well, I don't know if I need to write this stuff. I'll just explain it, because it'll help me remember what we were doing. Player had free movement. You had, like, a basic attack. Is this really the best program for this? Is there really no text input tool in Nasebro? That seems kind of stupid. That seems like a really basic thing. Insert text. Oh, it's T. It's just not in the toolbar. Oh, here we go. Okay, that's, that's way better. That seems like a really weird thing to miss. How's everyone's uh, weekend been then, chat? What the fuck? Have I just been writing on the wrong layer? Classic. Alright. Hang on then. How do I eye drop it? Eye? Brush. And we make the brush, like, enormous. Wait, what? This isn't perfectly... Wait, hang on, why is this not actually deleting? What the hell? Why is it leaving behind like a ghost? 
I get the original sprite wasn't fully transparent. Why why is this brush not? What the fuck? That seems kind of weird. I don't understand what I've done. Um, anyway. Very cold here. It's freezing, right? It's horrible. Let's use, like, the real layer here this time. We'll write down what we did last time. To have a little basis of how we're going to change things this time. Because I'm not going to make the same game we did before. We're going to do things a little differently, I think. Uh, text. Player. How big is font size 12? Font? This thing doesn't come with a font built in. Really? I have to find a bloody font? You couldn't... <sighs> For fuck's sake. Ace for right font, uh, text insert. I should work this out now. Do I really need to select my... Oh no, it's custom built in. Okay. Arial. No, use like courier. Courier. Courier? In, uh, terminal, maybe? What? Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, which monospace font do they have? I'm, I'm looking for one. Why do these only load when I click on them? Is this really saving me that much memory? Is one of these monospace? Consolas. This must be monospace, right? Consola. Come on. Alright. I guess we should increase our, um, our area. Let's work like this. Dude, it's just like MS Paint. Alright. Um, sunny, so nice walking weather. The dog must be happy then, right? The weekend was fun. You had, like, a meter of snow that fell on your car. Yikes. Snow is not that cold? What are you talking about? Sunny equals no clouds in the sky to keep the warmth in. Burr is trying to get cold, though. Is this true? Am I crazy? Am I, am I not thinking that snow is colder than sun? Maybe I'm losing something. Here we go. We had various things going on. Enemy. Alright, perfect. This represents the game nicely. Alright. T. Uh, player. Player had uh, was movement. Standard. Standard stuff. Player had uh, basic attack. It had like a... Did I write like a bomb? I don't remember if I actually got around to that or not. I feel like I didn't. Well, they had like a bomb of some kind. Why do you keep putting yourself over there? Right, right over here. Why Why there? Do I need to do like a little dot? What? Why here? I don't understand. Maybe that's just the middle of the screen. This doesn't look like the middle to me. Weird. I don't know why it's choosing that. Yeah, I don't think we made a, we'd implemented bombs. But um, let's pretend we did. Basic attack bomb, we had um, like crouching, what would you call it? Like focus, right? I don't think the focus really changed your shots much, did it? I think it just slowed you down, I, I don't remember. Was basic movement bomb focus, that's pretty much it, right? We had enemy, Uh, spawn in from text document. They had like a very basic path in interp. And I think, if I remember correctly, most of them just uh, shot shot directly at the player. Right? They were super basic enemies. And we had a uh, boss. We had one boss written in the donut boss. The boss had um, multiple paths. Oh, actually, 
spawns in at set part of level, mid or end. Okay. Boss had a uh, selection of uh, generic attacks, which would just do like, you know, just shoot the player or whatever. And we had like a selection of spell cards. We called them like tech cards or something stupid, but you know what I mean. Section of spell cards with pattern. So yeah, like the bullet patterns. This was like the cool part, really. And that's that's that. Just keeping it keeping it basic, right? We had two different. Uh, cho cho we had two different characters. At least I'd only written two characters. We had a uh, waifu. Waifu chan. I don't remember exactly what she did, but she had like. Uh... Did her bullets? I think her bullets. Bullets follow player velocity, I think. Maybe? Was that her? I don't remember. Bullets follow player velocity, gain some powerful new bullet types when... Get, yeah, just gain some new powerful bullet times as you level up. Uh, we had uh, Baker-chan. I don't remember what she did. She shoots out bakery related items. <laughs> I think her shots uh, must have just gone straight. Probably. That must have been what I'd done. We had a score system. Just some simple uh, save to text file high scores. Nothing too fancy. We had the start of a like a level editor. I mean we called it that. Well, level editor. Can you hear the music or do I need to raise it a little bit? Are you okay with it then? We had a level editor. We could uh, test boss patterns without having to test boss patterns quickly. Just write that like that. More of like a sandbox. Because this will help us, just what we've got here, right? This will help us determine what we need to change or improve with a new version, right? We had one stage. Um, enemy and boss load from text file. Grassy background for entire level. It had some like some sort of procedural clouds. I think they were procedural. At least they look procedural. Procedural clouds. We didn't have any music. But we did have some sound effects. We had some like basic like, you know, shooting, getting hit, ETC. Nothing too fancy. Oh yeah, boss actually also had um, dialogue. And uh, what was what's the name in Fallout? Yeah, acapella. Music's a bit quiet. I can raise it. Procedural carpet generation. Great question. Is it still too quiet, or do you want me to raise it a bit more? We had dialogue and um, yapper. What are they called? Bark. Barkers? You know like the thing where it's like someone, you have like a little icon on the screen while the, while the person is talking. I think that's called a barker, isn't it? Like we had, um... We had something, uh, yeah, let's use a different colour for this. We had like... Something talking. Like a little icon. I think that's a barker, isn't it? Is that what that's called? I don't know. Enemy was were just sort of flying along a path like this. Now let's draw like a little enemy here. Let's use a different color. 
enemy one, enemy two, enemy three. I think that's how it worked. Like we had a path and then we had multiple things run along the path. Spawn from basic path interp. Uh, multiple use same path. How about that? Boss. So the boss had like three states, right? How do I grab? What's this? M. Um, the boss would have three states, or like multiple states. Different states. States were, um, in dialogue. Cutscene, I guess. Different states. We had a cutscene state. We had a uh, basic attack state. We had a spell card state. And it would just sort of cycle like this. We use one. Two. Okay, this text is making things a lot easier. This would have been taking a lot longer without that. Okay. <laughs> sure. Why not? Spell card. It would run like this, and it would just sort of... Uh, let's go to one pixel. Like this. It would just loop between these two over and over again. Like that. Sus drawing. This is a little weird, isn't it? <laughs> just something like that. Let's also save this while we're doing it. Let's not save it in the unicorn folder. Let's just put it in my like, bloody documents here. Let's call it um, Woho Design. I'll save it somewhere better later, I'm sure, but we'll just pop it there for now so I can control S. And this, this constituted a, a boss fight, right? This constituted a level. Player had some basic abilities. Let's try and separate things a little bit more. We have like infinite space. This is a digital canvas. I can make this as big as I need. One stage. Enemy and boss load from text file. Grassy background for entire level. Procedural. Level consisted of... Um several parts. We had uh, pre-mid-boss, well, sections, I guess. We had uh, intro, which didn't really exist, but you know, you could have put an intro there. Intro, pre-mid-boss, normal enemies, mid-boss. What, what mid-boss did we implement? Do any of you remember? Was it the donut? Post mid boss enemies. Boss and then end stage. Hey Bad Scout, how are you doing? Trying to put the Twitch chat somewhere else. Put it over here. That's kind of fun. Like that. Oh yeah, chat, I posted a new Minecraft video for the for the subs earlier, so I think all of you can see it. You just woke up, it's 1pm and you're tired. Dude, I don't know if I wasted my weekend or not, but I woke up at like 11 to 12 both days. So I feel very rested, but I'm also a little annoyed. I kind of wish I could have gotten more done, but... You know, such is life, right? I'm doing alright otherwise, though. Were there two donut bosses? Baby donut and the father donut? I don't think so. I think we just had like the one donut. I don't remember if that was meant to be the mid boss or... I feel like that was meant to be the mid boss and the actual final boss was something I never got around to doing. Maybe. We had a few different designs. Anyway, that was the stage. We had we only had one stage. Oh yeah, let's just do like some basic level stuff as well. We had um, game state. Let's just write that for now. Game state. We had a, th a few difficulties. We had difficulty selection. I don't remember if this did anything, but this should have uh, changed bullet 
velocity, enemy, speed, etc. That's what I would think. Let's uh, move this up a little bit. We had uh, pausing. We had that like, main menu set up. I like the main menu. Cool background. Put that in there. Important to remember. That's that, pretty much. Oh, yeah, we had like a settings screen. Just like that. You could change stuff like uh, max, FPS, V-Sync, AA, ETC. I don't remember if anti-aliasing ever worked or V-Sync, but they existed. The game ran in uh, 4x3, I think. With a uh, non perfect scaling for full resolution. That didn't spell resolution, right? I'll actually move this down here. There we go. Resolu Resolute Eon. Oh, I'll get rid of this. Perfect. I'm aware that this, now I'm looking at this, this looks like it should probably be in like a OneNote file or something, but I don't own OneNote. And it under I don't understand it. That's fine for now. The game didn't have like too much of an overarching design, I think. Like graphic wise. Let's write like a graphic section. What are you looking at? I'm writing down a design document for Wohan because we didn't have anything before really. We had like a text file and I had like one image I drew once to try and explain things, but nothing like concrete. So I'm just starting out here by writing down what I remember that we did before. It'll help us identify some problems so we can fix them early before we actually start writing anything. Hi Beaver. I don't want to like write a bunch of code for something and then find out later it was a stupid idea, you know? So I'd like to, I'd like to get ahead and do that now. Um, obviously it's not going to be like final or anything, but I'd just like to have something basic set down so we can at least have like a, some kind of timeline, you know, like what do we want to get done, what what's important, what's not so important. What is control doing? What does this do? I, I don't understand. Anyway, yeah, so I'm just writing down what I remember from before. That's it, that's where we're starting here. It won't take too long. If I've forgotten anything, let, let me know. Graphics, I think most sprites were 16 or 32, if you remember. Remember what resolution the game ran at? Here's the Fumo headpads. Imagine putting more effort than a minimal plain text file for program design. I mean, yeah, that's what we had before, right? So I'd like to have something a bit nicer set out. And maybe we can come up with like a palette and some other things. Here you go, Monus. Do you like her little fluffy winter hat? You can't see it because of the green screen. Last week of uni. Oh, how exciting. Soon you're back to Stockholm. They have a syndrome for that, don't they? How exciting. Nearly done, huh? What are you going to do over your winter break? Cozy Fumo, exactly. Uh, I can actually check what we had. If I go to uh, download Woho source <coughs> data. All right, here's an example of a sprite sheet. Uh, let's go with this. Can I just, I can't just drag that in. No, that'll be asking too much, wouldn't it? Uh, open with... Can I make it open with Aspirate? Is Windows capable of knowing that? Where the heck is Aspirate installed? Is it in my Steam folder? Ah, totally. Music just suddenly got really loud. Huh? Hey, one shot box. Take me back to where I just was. What the fuck? It opened a new Aspirite window? Why? Why, why did, what? 
All right, well, it doesn't matter, I guess. These were like some examples of sprites that we had. These look like they are 16, or are they 32? These are 32 by 32. All right, let's just do this for now. Why the fuck does it put it on the first layer? I did not switch to the other layer, did I? Whatever. These are some sprites that we had. We had a bit of a style going on of some kind. Time has flown. How's uh, New Zealand? Are you still alive? How are you? How's your education? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the last time you were here. You can't go back home until the 24th because your sister will be arriving here by training you need to drive her home. Where's the Hawoho Git repo for me to pull from? Pull from? I think you mean pull too. Silly git. Not you. Well. Uh, hey everyone. New Zealand's good. How are you freezing right now or what? Hey chat. You mean clone. Hmm. It's summer. Oh yeah, Australia. Australia. You know, New Zealand. Different. Much more green. You burned out badly last year. Y'all should take more breaks. You have no exams left, so it's time to vibe. That's a good vibe. Have a chill. I hate this. Uh, let's just fix that quickly. Go back to the first layer. We never need to touch this background layer. Let's just lock it to make sure I don't accidentally break it. Um, with graphics, we had like a sort of... We do have a bit of a design going on. We were using the Game Boy uh, palette. But we weren't restricting it. Not restrict... No restrictions on number of colors per sprite. We were just using the Game Boy palette. But we weren't saying only like one color per sprite. Everything had an outline. Well, black and white outline. Just like that. Because this helped us differentiate it from the background. The thing with education is you watched me two years before you started high school and you graduated high school three weeks ago. You Are you an adult now? How are the taxes? Are you enjoying... Are you enjoying, like, body hair and stuff? Like, how's that all going? You're a big boy. That must be weird, right? Do I look any older? Probably not, right? How many years is that? How, how long is high school? You gave up revising for calc of several vars, and you barely got 50% in the unit. Luckily, that was your last exam, so it was the only one that tanked. Shouldn't affect your overall score too much, should it? Am I not wearing my scarf right now? I want to get a blanket, but... I think I'll be fine. The taxes are too many, bloody hell. Five years here. It's been seven years. What is, re what is reacting to the stream and how do you do it? Twitch added it uh, more analytics because they've realized that they actually have comp uh, competition because YouTube analytics are great. So they have a thing where like, you can react to the stream at moments and I can see that later. I haven't done that yet, but um, I guess it's like, you know, if you do like a five hour stream and you're wondering why like viewership peaked or something at some point, you can go and see that everyone reacted with a sad emoji and then repeat that, I guess. I, I don't really know. I don't know the use case quite yet. It seems a little weird. Yeah, I think everyone's just reacting with the first reaction. I, I don't see anything. Like in OBS, I just see the chat, you know? I don't, I don't see like a thing popping on my face. A single 10 credit unit in your second year is 136th of your final grade. Damn. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Just use emotes as usual, you know? Don't worry about it. Um, 32 by 32. That was pretty firm, I think. Uh, oh, actually, this will tell us the size of the game. If I open this with Ace Parade. The game was 640 by 480, which I suppose makes some sense. I hate how this opens a new fucking thing every time. This is the carpet background. We all love the carpet background. 
Can we get a wool hee hee for carpet backgrounds? Um, game window 640x480, which it actually that scales nicely to 1080, I guess. Um, wound. Okay, great. <laughs> Sprites were uh, like that. That's. I mean, that's the bit I really. Oh, clouds were not procedural. It was just a picture of clouds I had from Photoshop, I guess. Oh, huh. they look pretty procedural. Oh shit! I actually have the backplate PNG as well. Open with a sprite. This seems like a weird thing to have to design, but I did. Do you remember this? I wish I could scale between 50 and 100. Why can't I? Can I just type in 75? No. Alright, Ace Brain. Oh, it's just deleted everything behind it, naturally. I just wanted to look at it for a second. The game window is 640 by 480. The play window was 380 by 450. We gotta go to sleep. Good night, Unicorn. Thank you for, for popping in. I'm glad you enjoyed it today. Have a nice, have a nice sleep. Um, weird padding. Should really be using multiples of two. Um, well anyway, let me let me write that down. Yeah, this was weirdly thought out. Subway. Sure. Uh, play window three eighty by four fifty. Strangely. Uh, padding fifteen pixels. Just seems a little odd. Uh, four ten pixels to end. So that would be six forty minus four ten is uh two thirty. I think is the HUD. 230x480, I think. Hey, PPPRC Gaming Grandma. I'm sure. That's cool to have. Uh, I'm going to delete this now. Oh, actually, hang on. Have I written all this on the wrong? Yeah, I have. Great. Naturally. Layers, am I right? Anyone here use layers before? You can play a demo. Lazy purple uploaded. Yeah, I saw. Uh, okay. I mean, we'd actually done. We did quite a lot of work on Woho One, right? No music. Let me just write that down. Chris has written as like a main menu theme. It's the one we use in the um, pre-stream. You know this video. That's like a song Chris wrote. I think she used. Uh, Family tracker for it. Really impressive. Uh, she also wrote this one. Remember this song? She wrote this as well the other day. Very powerful. I'm just showing off now, aren't I? Yeah. Chris is very powerful. She could beat any of you in a fight. Don't even, don't even get it twisted. I liked the bullet sprites. I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought these were fun. Fuck. Uh, open with Ace Bright. It just has to open a new one every time, her huh, Windows? No other way. I liked this. I'm gonna note this. You should play Osu PPPRC Gaming Grandma. We had some like little particles set up, didn't we? Particles? They looked kinda cool. We had uh, power-ups, so we had um, score, life, uh, power, bomb. We must have had something, like the bomb must have like cleared the screen or something, right? We had um, enemy bullets. They had different hitboxes, I think. And we had uh, player bullets. I don't think these look too shabby, honestly. Chris can one-hit KO Toxapex in rain. With Ember. 
as well. These are like pretty good. I don't know what this is meant to be. Wow, my fucking neck. Oh, I don't know what I just did. I just like got it twisted. Ow. Bugger. Donut? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what makes sense. I just like tweaked my neck. These look pretty good. Um, I don't know. If, there must be a way to not have to have an outline around everything, though. Although I did think the coloured outline around these looked really cool. Like around the... Uh... Can I rotate this? Just briefly so you can see it. These, I think, look awesome. This, this is a, These are really cool sprites. They're like single colour glow. These look really, really cool. And they like, when they got to like the top of the screen, they'd like flip around. That, that was awesome. I really liked that. They had like a really cool effect. They wouldn't get like smaller than like this, I think. They'd flip around like this. Yeah, I like that. But, I mean, the game sort of had an art style, I guess. It does, it just looks a little messy. Cause like while we did limit the palette, I don't think it was limited enough. I don't think things really match together too well. They're, they're really, like, high saturated. Um, at least, it, like, you know, we did have a palette. We had the Game Boy one. But the saturation levels are through the bloody roof. And, like, trying to look at this behind, with, like, the grass background behind, just looked a little odd. Um, apparently. Anyway, that's that. This is this. I think this is a fair amount. Um, I don't remember what, like, enemies had, like, everyone had, like, a hitbox. I'm not going to start writing that shit, though. This covers it pretty well, right? I don't think I missed anything from the, what our original design was, right? We had a game, player, enemies and bosses, enemies are running along a path, shoot direct, like, sort of at the player, bosses would have a bit more going on, they'd sort of cycle between some states. There was some vague score system set up. There were two characters that had slightly different bullet effects. Stage was all set up from a file that we like manually had to write in. I should write them manually. Written. Because that's important to remember. Ah, oh, bugger. There we go. Who needs control D? There we go. We have to manually write a text file for everything, which is something I think I'd change if I were to go this route again. Either I wouldn't do stuff in a text file in that way, or I would write like a generator. Maybe something in like basic and Python or something, I don't know. It seems weird that like we, we made like this idea for a level editor, but we'd, we were still manually writing boss patterns in the text file. And I, I had like this vision in my head at some point where I'd have like a window like this, a little preview here, and then a bunch of sliders. Um, let's just... Something like this. And each of these would have just stuff like, um, where am I, like, you know, uh, velocity. Angle. Some sine wave bollocks. I don't know, whatever. And you'd see like a little preview of like uh, something like shooting out the bullet. And you could like adjust this. And then you'd hit like save. And this would output the text file describing that bullet. You know? That's something I wanted to do. And then maybe even have something where like you'd be able to plot out the like screen and like draw a path um where's the shape tool i'm looking for so we'd write down you know like um bullet tester something like this and then we'd have like boss tester so you'd be able to write out like a little path like this give me the brush what the fuck you'd be able to like drop a pin you know make like a little design like this. 
path creator. Let's actually call that. Something like that. I don't know. Wouldn't that be complicated? You're not know enough about coding to understand. It was complicated enough that you couldn't be asked to do it, but no, I don't think it should be. Because as it was, we were writing a bunch of stuff in a text file, like, um... Ugh. Stretch. We were writing this stuff manu uh, manually. <clears throat> and to test it, we'd just relaunch the game and go to the level editor, save the file, and then reload the level editor and see, like, you know, what would the boss bullet do now? Is it swirling around like this? Or is it, you know, going like that? Or, or what? Because, you know, we had some patterns where the bullets went like this in, like, a big grid, right? We had some where it was going like this. And we had to manually define them. Are there just points you could offer different ways to interpolate between them? Yeah, we had that. We had we had one built in. I don't remember which one we had. We had, like, I think... I have, like, a memory that we read from, uh... There was some scientific paper that someone posted. Donut, probably. But, like... It was a way to have four points and it would interpolate between them smoothly. Because if you're just interpolating between two points, everything just goes sharply between them. And if you had four points, it must have been a Bezier curve, right? If you have four points, it sort of reads ahead and behind and does a smooth curving. It must have been Bezier, yeah. Bezier curve, yeah. That was cool. I liked that. And we implemented it out of like a maths document, so I actually felt smart. Dude, this is a cool remix of your own. Anyway, yeah, it wasn't manual hell. So this is as a result of it not being really designed. We just sort of were testing stuff. This is looking neat, by the way. I didn't mean for it to look so neat and tidy, but it's kind of cute. Um, so yeah, that was that, and we didn't design it out, and we, we didn't have a plan. We were just like, we need a boss to move around. Uh, how are we going to do that? Uh, just have it move along points and test it around. It was so messy. In the path creator, you could have some pre-made patterns like arcs and lines that the user can change the length. Yeah, well, like, <clears throat> in my head, like, right now, this instant, I'm thinking that we could have something like the Osu editor. Have you used the Osu editor, chat? If I wanted to be really funny, I could reuse the Osu editor and just write a parser for Osu that reads out a map and <laughs> translates it into Bezier curves. Because that's a pre-made editor, right? <laughs> like, I could map out my level, right? as like a bunch of circles with, like, sliders in between. And <laughs> I could just assume that Peppy's already done the work. Right? <laughs> they wouldn't be stealing the game. This outputs an OS... OS... Z or something? This is someone doing Degoza. That's what Osu does, right? And it's already got like a timing system baked in. I'm basically just recreating that, right? OSP or OSM? Let's say OSM. This is like an enormous text file with a list of like timings and locations on a screen. I feel like I could interpret that and reuse the Osu editor to, to make my game. That feels so really weird. <laughs> but it would be technically possible um, if we didn't want to do that. What's wrong with doing that? I don't know. But um, I was thinking we could make a level editor, or at least like a boss editor, right? Where you have like a timeline at the top, right? Timeline. It's OSZ. I knew it. We have a timeline up here, and you'd have like a grid. And you could like place a dot here. This would be like one, two, three. One. I mean, I'm basically remaking the OC editor, right? You would like this would be the play field. And you could have like maybe down the side here. I don't know. You have like some tools. So, a uh, point to move to. 
uh, uh, weight here. Um, built in and then built in like patterns. So this could be like a swirl or a uh, zig, zag or whatever. Like there's some pre-baked in stuff. And we could like drag and drop this stuff basically, move along the timeline. And then this would print out the text file that we were manually creating. And maybe we could even have like a play button, you know, like a play to test. And it would just, it would just show like a dot moving around a blank screen, doing something. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, shoot bullet or uh, shoot spell card, whatever. And then this would just print out a text file saying at millisecond 60, do this. At millisecond 70, do this. At millisecond 90, do this. Right? We were manually writing this. But we could have some basic editor we could write. This might be fun, like doing, make, making something like that, right? And it could be as deep or as loose as we'd need it to be. Like if it's just me using it, I could easily just have this timeline be like in milliseconds and just have like a less than and a right than to skim along a path. It wouldn't have to have scaling and zooming and all this stuff that OC wants to have. Just something I've thought of. Like, these things combined, with a bullet creator and this... You know, this this could even have a button that goes to, like, bullet creator. Uh, go to bullet creator. You know, whatever. You know how, like, the source... Have you used Source Filmmaker chat? There's, like, a button that goes to the particle editor for Source Engine. This would make my life so much easier. And then we can design out, like, a boss over, like... You know, some number of minutes. And you could save... We'd have a save button, probably. To text. We could save this as, uh, like, a pattern. Or the boss fight, or something. I think that that would be cool. And this is something I, I hadn't considered before, but I like it. Anyway, that's that. This is this. How are you feeling so far, chat? Are you, are you playing along? Are you, are you following? This is how Woho was, excluding this stuff. Miss, ignore like the stuff on the right. This is the system we had in place. There was some thought put in, but not enough. So now I want to go... Brain is expanding. Do you feel smart? Let's save this as Woho design. And let's make a new one. That's also 3000 by 3000 and call this Woho New Design. Um, something like this. Properties. A little bit transparent. Lock. New. White. Brain is expanding. All right. We've had, I need to have in my head, I want to have a more concrete idea. I want to have a game set and I want a program to match that design rather than the inverse of like writing code and then sometimes writing down what I've just done. So let's, let's think about it, right? What do we want Woho to be? We're going to call this Woho. Is this Woho 2 or is this Woho like 1.1? <laughs> Because Woho 1 was never released. It wouldn't it be really weird if like I actually spent three years on this and released it on like Steam and people are like, the fuck is Woho 1? So I'm just going to call it like Woho. I'm going to do what every game, to, every game company does and call everything the same. This is my design document. Woho is going to be a bullet hell. It's going to be... Pixel art. It's going to feature. Do I want? I'm gonna have a local leaderboard for now. I would like an online leaderboard with replays. Because I think that couldn't be. That must be. If the game is designed in such a way, um, we could make a replay system where, like, 
it's just constantly recording like player inputs and then it repeats them you know or player location and then we could have like a replay system so you can see how people have done this is something i'd like but not doing right now this is something i'd like um it's gonna have five stages yeah i'm just just writing something down for now i liked the idea that the stages were like you know start enemies mid boss enemies boss i liked this pattern i think that's a good a good style to stick to because this can like introduce a, an element a difficulty element and then the boss can expand on that you know introduce mechanic uh use mm, expand mechanic let's make this one all right so it matches and i feel like every stage should have like a gimmick right I don't know what the gimmicks would be quite yet, but this could be stuff like, um, I was thinking about this earlier. I don't know how much Toho you've played chat, but there's, um, there's some really unique spell cards, right? There's some where it's just like, you know, a fucking pattern and you just have to dodge. But then there's some like, I think Notori's ones where it like makes like a wave of bullets and you're not like, you're not fighting the enemy. Like they're invulnerable or they take little damage and your job is like to you know, navigate through this, like, difficult movement, like this. And there's one in Fantastic Danmaku Festival, or there's a few that look really cool, where, like, there's a Ran spell card, where it's above, it's a bunch of these, like, you might know the one I'm thinking about. There's a bunch of these, uh, like, magical carpets moving around, and you are obstructed, but your hitbox is visible. And you, and, like, you're basically like forced to move like a slider puzzle. I find these gimmicks really cool. So I'd like to like, ex like use that sort of thing and expand on it. And not, not just have it as like a generic shoot em up. I'd like to have like some basic gimmick and then expand on it, but have it like within reason that I can actually program it and that it's not just gonna be like a frustrating something, you know? So like, you know, uh, movement based like Tori uh, ran in Dan. I can remember what Dan first means. Or we can have like um, some sort of timing based. Or we can have color reading. Although we'd have to be careful with that. Careful with accessib. I know it's maybe silly for me to think about. Because, like, who, you know, one person's probably going to play this. But I don't want to introduce a puzzle that, like, is impossible for people with color blindness. So I'd probably need to have, like, some setting to change that. Or any color puzzle would just need to be two colors. So they could maybe just do two shades of gray or something. Um, I want to have, like, a rhythm one somehow. I don't know how I'd do it. But that would be sick. Not certain yet. But I liked, um... Crypto the Necrodancer, that sort of thing. And like Dark Souls. You know, where it's like, there's like a, a call and a response, you know? Boss, create, grass executes, animation, player should, react accordingly like a dance you know make sure to make plenty of bugs so people can speed run it yeah i'm just like i'm thinking in my head there could be a boss that's like you know you know they're like moving like like a wah 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 and then like there's a trillion fucking bullets on screen but if you input that in a similar way you dodge all of them you know and it like it looks really impressive like how did you dodge all of that but it's actually really easy as long as you follow the boss you know what i mean I've, there must be some some games that do that where like they make it look like you're executing something incredible 
but really you did like two inputs and the game moves all the bullets around you or something. I don't know. But I like the idea, like, like a Simon says as well. You know. Oh, actually, um, the OSRS um, TOA boss, that's like, that has come phase. I don't remember what the boss is called. With the four uh, elements. He has a cool, he has some cool mechanics I will steal. I mean, look at and think about. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but like this boss has multiple phases and like, there's one phase where it's like a big circle and it's split into four like this like this and this is the level and like there's some elements here there's like a you know maybe like a, a yellow or a, a fire element or a, a water element or a, a rock element or something and these just simply like simon says like they'll flash like this and then a second later there's a bunch of lightning here and then a bunch of lightning here and a bunch of lightning here and a bunch of lightning here or whatever and if you follow his movements properly you won't take any damage but if you don't, you, like, get fucking one-shot. And there's some other ones where it's, like, you know, the boss is, like, over here. And then there's this enormous pattern of weird UFOs wiggling around the screen kind of randomly. And you have to dodge it while attacking the boss. But you can only hit him once before he, like, teleports somewhere new. And, um... I must have been... I must. I feel like I must have talked about Woho when we did this boss fight. I don't know. It's in my head. Somehow. I wonder if there's a way to have like a mirror puzzle as well, somehow, like a mirror reflect puzzle. I just have to look through like game genres I like and think about what could what could reasonably be put into a game with this kind of movement, you know, wazzed. I'm thinking that maybe the player should have more than like two attacks. Or maybe it should have more than just a basic attack, you know, basic and bomb. Stage where the bullets are chocolate and you have to take as much damage as possible, you know, dude, like Something like that could be fun, yeah. Like a reverse... It would have to be obvious, but like, you're trying to hit as many bullets as possible. But maybe they're not bullets. Maybe they are power-ups, not bullets. You get the idea, and like, you know... Hang on. What the fuck? Um, the the more you get, the easier the boss. Weaker. So it could be that the boss is weaker. Or you are stronger. I don't know the better way to implement that. We'd have to experiment. But I like this idea where, like, leading up, you know, you're trying to pick up, like, energy for a generator that, like, weakens the boss's force field or something, you know, and you have to pick them up. You know, like, there's the UFOs, right? Um, like, the UFOs in UFO. You know, they give you, like, a power-up, and it's a thing you need to, like, actively go through the enemies to try and grab, to, to level yourself up. Um, or, like, uh, energy to power a anti-force field generator or something. Or more sand for a timer to give you more time i don't know or like some you know mystical power to last longer in special shadow realm <laughs> i don't know you know what i'm trying to get at you know like um ah oh, fuck there was that like uh what's the this is it pc no it's not pcb which is the one is it Ten Desires? Has that, like, has, like, the death mechanic. Is it Ten Desires? Where, like, the music, like, goes really weird. Everything goes, like, sort of black and white, faded. And, like, you get, like, a last second where you're in, like, a spirit rush mode to do as much damage as you can before you die. This is great. <clears throat> anyway. These are examples. Hello, Abdo. I haven't seen you for a bit, huh? That's a, that's a rare face. How are you? Do my I'm sitting so chilly. <clears throat> chilly, chilly. 
Let's put this stage info elsewhere. This is like details. <clears throat> Good, how are you? Chilly, chilly. Otherwise, I'm not so bad. What have you been up to? You must surely by now be like 50, right? Um, bullet hell, pixel art, local leaderboard, online, five stages. I'm going to say there should be like the characters plus one hidden. I love a, I love a hidden character. It's such, it's such a fun thing. It feels like you've unlocked something. And the hidden character could have some like cool skateboard or something. I don't know. Pretty close. Hell yeah. Have you graduated from all your things that you must have graduated from and passed every exam and worked as a foreman by now? Kiwi Copter, I like the idea that like you'd unlock it through an extra stage. I don't know. I don't know where, I don't know if I'd have an extra stage. Because it's base, extra is basically just like another bonus boss fight, right? And you unlock it by doing well in the base game. I kind of like that. But it's also more work. Still three more year, years of grueling med school. Oh, what are you currently on? Ooh, I didn't know you were doing med. Have you done any uh, pharmacy? You like the local leaderboard? Yeah, I mean, I like the local leaderboard as well. It means like you can see your improvement over time, right? Oh, whoops, there is no text. Mescal takes a long time. I'm aware. I'm aware. But when, what did you start on? What, 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 um, syllabus are you currently on? Are you doing any, like, pharmacy? Or just, uh, medicine? Dude, I like that it keeps you on the right pixel until you zoom all this far out. So small. Anyway. I like the idea of three characters plus one hidden, and they have to be, like, unique, right? They should be, like, a... Easy to pick up character. Low. I don't know if Reimu is necessarily like a low ceiling, but she's got like a small hitbox and stuff, you know. Small hitbox. Homing bullets. Sort of like a Reimu. This should be, um... Sort of, you know... Like a, like a soft difficulty, like choosing your starter in Pokemon, right? It's like a sort of, um, middling. I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. You know, standard stats. <laughs> standard stats, but more damage. And maybe, you know, more points or something. No, that's stupid. Mm, more damage. Harder to hit bullets with. Better at dodging. Somehow. <laughs> Better at dodging than small hitbox? No, let's say worse at dodging. Oh, relies more on player skill to dodge. There you go. Because like a small hitbox is like the game making it easier. Farmer is last year's stuff. Right now you're on surg surgery and internal medicine. Oh cool. What are you, how, how have you been enjoying yourself? How have you, how have you found that stuff? What, what have you been doing? Have you, have you started internal yet? I'm putting my gloves on by the way. Have you done much, have you sat in on much surgery? Chris has done some weird fucking stuff. She's done like, she's sat in and watched like eye surgery and stuff. You wouldn't say enjoyment. I mean, it's a big grind, right? You couldn't do surgery, you're way too shaky. You need to do it with, like, the big AR goggles, right? Where, like, you have, like, a, you, you, like, wear these goggles or look at a screen and you use, like, these levers and it makes these tiny, minute motions for you. But you can do these big sweeping motions to apply them. Your hands shake too much. Yeah, I mean, if you were, like, an actual, like, standard surgeon, you'd, like, sit in there trying to, like, peel someone's scalp open. Like an orange, you know. Not close yet to cutting people up yet. Have you been taught, like, injections and stuff? Early onset Parkinson's. That's right, chat. And then we'd have, like, a um, min-max. 
we'd have like a cool min-max character, right? Where it's like high speed, high damage, precise bullets. So like you have to hit them. Maybe like relies on hitting multiple bullets for build up. So like it's even harder. And the high speed makes it easier to dodge if you know what you're doing, but otherwise it might make it so you miss a lot. Uh, bad AoE. Because I think they need to have some balance, right? Um, but yeah, this this character would be like the best for like really good players, I guess. But but a little stressful, and this would be a little bit more comfy, and this would be super comfy. And then secret. The secret one would have like some fun gimmick. Like, I don't know, like... Summons? Maybe? Or melee? Just something to set it apart, you know? Make you feel like you've, you've unlocked something unique, you know? Like you've, you've, you're experiencing something that most players won't, won't, because most players won't get the hidden character. Just some, something weird. It doesn't have to be... Like, it could be game-breaking. Like, why not? If you unlocked it, you've probably beaten the game on, like, a high difficulty or something. So it could be, like, really strong. Or, you know, it could be, like, the Watcher in uh, Slay the Spire, where they're just broken beyond relief. But you, like, you earn it, I guess. Injections is also early stuff. Those oranges will never know what came on them. The gold board stuff is cool. Maybe you should do this thing if you go to your little Unity project. Yeah, I feel like this... This is easy to get my head around. Like, as we did here, you might have missed this earlier, Abdo. We wrote out what we did for Woho before. You know, we had enemies and players and just some basic stuff. Trying to remember some basics about the game and some little thoughts about what we might improve. And now I'm making something a little bit more concrete for new Woho. Um, for more context, I suppose. I want there to be some... Do I want that? I kind of... I like roguelites, chat. This game in and of itself is kind of like a roguelite. But I really like the card upgrading mechanic in Toho... Um, is it Marketeers? Forbidden Marketeers? I don't remember. Where, like, after each boss fight, you can, like, make your character stronger with, like, a few different ways. But I don't know if that's too much for this. I don't know if I'm overcomplicating it. But these are like the players, we'd have a few different levels to go through. I think player abilities, I, I kind of want to have like something like a parry, but parries can be like really broken, right? Like once you've learned how to do it, it completely trivializes the entire game. But I like how Toho has like, uh, grazing, right? Where you stand next to a bullet and it gives you more points. But I'm just trying to think of different ways that we could extend the game a little bit. Like a Smash Brothers style shield, for example, where like you can parry but it breaks the shield a little bit. You know? I kind of like that. I'm gonna think about that. Um, player mechanics. So we'd have like a basic shot. Um, more powerful with uh, power-ups. A limited armor of sorts, yeah. We must, ha we must have some sort of screen clearing. Some kind of bomb, right? I think that's, a, that's, that's fun. Like, bombs at the end of the day, they help you sort of power through things you haven't quite understood yet. Helpful for learning. You know? They just make the game a little bit more fun, and you can choose not to use them. But I want, I want to consider, like, a sort of Smash Bros sort of shield or dodge. Just something... Where it's like, time properly for a parry, but uh, takes damage, maybe stuns you if it breaks, to stop you from abusing it. You know, different characters have different, uh, you know, characters have different shields. So, you know, it might, I don't know, uh, bigger recharges different speeds, or um, better parry window. 
Fortnite could just be a bubble like Smash. You know, in Smash, if you'd have like a light shield, it goes like a big puff, like a dash. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, like a like a dash or dodge. Just something for like a little bit of a little bit of excitement. I like um, Enter the Gungeon. Gungeon? How do you spell? Is that Gungeon? I like the Gungeon roll. I think it trivializes the game, but I think if the game was balanced around it, it could be good fun because it sort of like locks you into a predefined animation. So it's something you can plan around. But also, you know, nice iframes if executed properly. And then maybe if it's like, you know, timed correctly, plus score, you know, like if you roll the instant you would have gotten hit, maybe you get a little bonus, like a graze bonus. I like the Gungeon roll. Maybe it's just um, eight. Uh, angles to make it easier you know if it was like if you had to perfectly aim like with a controller I think that would be really frustrating so if we lock it into a guaranteed thing like that maybe like um, hold then input something and then this way we could have it so you'd um, preview trajectory to help you practice and then some characters have that disabled I, I don't know so like you, you could hold a button and then input and you'd roll but you could see where you're about to go before you roll quickly just like a little arrow or something um it's like a like a like a tutorial i also i'm having like this mental image of like could i make the game like a twin stick where instead of move up down left right and you only shoot up could it be like more like more of like a twin stick shooter where you move around but also you can shoot different angles and then with two other inputs or three other inputs you could do bullets or dodge or jump or whatever i don't know if that's too much hmm it's something I've maybe experiment with. I'd like to experiment with Twin Stick, because this gives you, like, some depth. It means, like, if the boss goes below you, you can shoot down, you know? You don't have to, like... You don't have to basically keep the boss in the top half of the screen, you know? It would prevent player from just sitting at bottom of page. It might require too many fingers. I mean, twin stick shooters exist, but they tend to be quite slow paced. Um, more. It would also mean it would be kind of fun with a controller, I think. More uh, precision with shots, you know, because you could sort of aim where you like. How's the programming going? Great, thank you. So far, I've just been writing all these words. I think we've made some good word progress. This is something I've wanted to do for a while, so it's nice to get around to it. How are you, negativity? Um, I'd like to experiment with twin stick stuff. Might be, might make it too difficult. You hate it when you have to write words while programming. Exactly, right? Let's leave it there for now. I want there to be a bit of depth, you know. Easy to learn tough to master that's really that's really what i'm on to that's the end goal right we want something that like someone who knows like a little bit about gaming maybe not a brand new to gaming but someone who's done a little bit they could pick it up and have an okay time but we also want someone who's like a gaming master to be able to like hit every parry and roll through everything and get bonus points and bonus lives and more damage and speed through it even faster where like you know new player will take a while to beat an experienced player could get through it quicker I like the idea of that. How much is this going to sell per copy? Two hundred pounds, plus tax. I think it'll sell. That's that. Um, damn. I know, right? So let's let's sit there. That's the players. We'll have a couple unique players. They'll have some unique mechanics of some kind. I like the shield slash dodge thing. You dive a hard bargain. I know, right? There must be like. I think one of the gimmicks could be for a stage, could be like um, a 
I don't know how to describe this, so give me a second. I'll just draw it. You'd have like a little glow. Like a yellow glow. And the player would have to go over it. And then the player would have a glow. And the player would have to take this to something. You know, a barrel. I don't know, whatever. Some some kind of generator or something. So it's basically like a thought, mechanic thought. What the fuck? Mechanic thought. Um, player picks up item from part of screen. Moves it to another while dodging. And maybe this weakens the boss. The glow launcher. Well, I'm thinking more like, I referenced that I might want to have some cool, like, color reading or something. We could have a screen that's just like a trillion bullets running around, and you have to sort of navigate around it like a maze. Pick up this thing, and then navigate somewhere different. And then that turns off the bullets for a second, you can get shot on the boss or something. Right? I think that would be fun. Like, navigate, bullet, maze. Move to another while dodging, weakens boss, disables maze. You know? That, that could be like a fun little gimmick, you know? Like, if you're bad at the game, this would be tough. You'd be having a long time trying to get through the little maze. But if you're good, you could probably just go right through it. Go through the walls. You have bubble wrap. Hell yeah. Celeste Strawberries. Well, I don't think this game really handles that sort of thing. I think it will be more of like, you know, like a scrolling... Screen scroller. Rail shooter. You know? Munch the bubble wrap. Do not eat the bubble wrap. Oh. I have to really think about, like, the graphical fidelity, though, right? Because the game we were doing before had this odd resolution. But the game was in this sort of field. With a big HUD. And... 32 by 32 sprites were running around this little... How big was it? Uh, 380 by 450 screen. So the screen was like, you know, 10 players wide. And then like, 15 tall or something, I don't know. What the big hub contained? Well, it had like your score and your lives and your points and... I said points twice. It had data, all right? And the idea was just so the game would have a vertical page because for normal vertical shooters, this, this is the normal interaction. Whereas if I would make this like a twin stick shooter, maybe I'd want the game to be more of like a square, you know? So you could, you have like a bit more horizontal movement. But then if the game's in 16 by 9, that sort of cuts off even more of the screen. Then again, the game could be smaller than the window, like a VTuber overlay. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, just a thought. But I have to really decide, right? Graphically, right? This is, like, quite important. So it's had, like, a little... Little... You know, little Windows cursor. I'm a graphical engineer. It's amazing. You can tell it's a button. You can tap that button. It's kind of a hard point, right? I kind of want the game to be... I like the Game Boy graphics thing. Where it would be like... What did I say? Like 320 by 240. To... 220 by... 360? Is it 360 by 220? That can't be it. I wanted a 4x3 resolution. Is that necessary? Chat! Does anyone use a 4x3 monitor anymore? Surely not, right?
Hang on, I want to do... I don't think so. I don't th should I make the game for 4x3 Banny? I feel like I should... I feel like I should make it 16x9. Like, originally I was going to do 4x3 so it would be accessible, but like... I don't have 4x3 monitors. Unless you're playing this on like a really old TV. Hey, CD. Because uh, 320 by 240 or 2... Is it 240? Oh, maybe that's right. This probably isn't the best way to do this. Hang on. 4x3. This is 4x3. Well, it's, it's stretched, but they play it on a 16x9 monitor, and then they just stretch it with ways, or they, you know, shrink it with black boxes. I like... This is, uh, what did I say, 320 by 240 I like the idea of a 320 by 240 It scales integer-wise to uh, 640 by 480 and basically up to just below 1080p Like, it scales up to, like, 980 Is that right? 980p? 980 by 1280? Something like that? Which with integer scaling would be 1080p This song's cool It would be 1080p with like a little black box around it Kind of like this This is how the game window would look And then they, would, they could be like an option I was talking with Donut about this If people wanted to like destroy the art style They could stretch it all the way out to 16x9 and like make everything look blurry and horrible. But I kind of do like the like 16 the 4x3 play area. Just cuz it's a it's a fun like gimmick to sit in. But in this window like sprites can't have that much space. Like if the play area let's sit in, you know, 8 pixels. Let's say like a small buffer, right? Is this how is this 16 by 16? This is 16 by 16. So let's halve that. 8 by 8. All right, this is an 8 by 8. So if we make an 8 by 8 buffer around everything. So this could be like the HUD buffer, you know, nothing fancy. Just because the screen, I feel like the actual, the play area for the screen should never actually be the edges of the screen. Um, hang on just a second. 8 is that. Really weird way to do this, forgive me. Whoops. And we need this on the other side as well. God, it's kind of hard to do this at this resolution. That, I think, is right. So this should still be 3, 320 by 240. Uh, yeah, that's right. Are you just typing down all the resolutions? That's handy. I'm going to copy and paste that. This is how it scales, I suppose. 960 by 720. Oh, is that right? Oh, I'm thinking of this. 1280 by uh, 960. Sorry. I think this is my OC resolution. Because I like perfect integer scaling. I think stuff looks nice if you actually stick to the uh, designed art style. And it sticks nicely into 1440p. Well, not 1440p, but, you know, close enough. Check this out. Just realized I could do that this second. Select an area and then disable contiguous fill. And you can replace every color with it. That's handy. You still play on 800 by 600. Yeah, but is your monitor 4x3? Like the actual thing you're playing on physically? Um, this is 8 pixels. Oops. Eight. 
if we were to run with this and we were to use the normal uh, player sprites that we'd done before, which is 32 by 32, that's like a significant part of the screen, right? Like this. This is huge, relatively. Let me let me move this onto the grid, actually, so I can do this properly. This player sprite is now enormous. Right? Absolutely huge. It sits sort of like that, I guess. You have an old CRT 4x3, but you mostly play on 16x9 black bars. Okay. With a sprite size like this, and you know, if we were to have the HUD, if we were to make the play field like a square, right? Which would be, um, let's make it light blue. Whoops. Come on. Uh, 224 tall, so 224 by 224. If we were to make the play field a square, like this, whoops, oh, hang on, why does that filter, oh, contiguous is tabled. Let's make it like green for now. That doesn't give you much room for activities, right? This looks like an old, like, like an old, uh, Neo Geo game or something. I don't know. It doesn't look right. I feel like this doesn't give you enough space for activities. Maybe it's fine. Oh, bye Abdo. Good luck with your with your testing. The monitor at home might be 4x3. Hmm. Have fun, good luck. Have fun, good luck. Let me just uh, change the levels here. I'm going to just disable this. It seems small, right? But I'm worried if I were to make this 16 by 16 instead of 32 by 32, which would be correct. I'm worried that we'd lose a lot of graphical fidelity. Um, let's get a 32 by 32 area here. That's not right. Like that. This is roughly what 16 by 16 looks like, right? It's really small. Hello, Jay. I dropped something. I dropped a extremely exciting stream for my viewers. How are you? Um, as it is, though, I think this is I think this is too small, right? Even if we were to like remove the outline. Hopefully your standards. What's up? Don't worry, my, my standards are as, as low as they could get with a chit with a Twitch chat like this. Am I right, fellow viewers? Stinky viewers? How are you? Hello. If I were to just remove the outline, I still don't think this would scale like that well, you know? It might look a little better, but hang on. Sixteen by sixteen. Technically, we could do 24 by 24. It's not a common size to use. It might work better. <laughs> How are you? How's your weekend been? I also kind of like the sprites we drew before. I'd like to reuse them, but maybe maybe it's just not likely. The other option is to scale the game up twice or one and a half times and have it at one of these other resolutions. So 640 by 480, I think, is what the game was before. Which kind of worked. Um, oh lord. But this is like a real design choice I need to think about. Because I also want the game to have like an actual palette. What we had before... We used a palette, but it wasn't... Well thought out. I, I have like an image in my head, right? I don't know if there's a built-in palette that looks the way I want it to. Probably not. Uh... Let's chuck the Google Palette on for now. I know it's massive. I know it's massive. But I like the idea of having like a little swatch to the side with like, you know, half these colors, right? Just 
take out some of these for a second. We have like a little swatch on the side, but everything actually sticks to that swatch. And I want... Hang on, how do I want this to look? That looks nicer. I want to have like, you know, cool like, well thought out like purples that are like hue shifted as they get lighter into like a blue or you know like properly properly thought out like tones get warmer as they get brighter you know and they get cooler as they get darker and then for everything to stick to that palette like I don't know how this game would necessarily look like that I don't know it's just a thought I think we don't have time to do that today necessarily but I would like to think out at some point like sit down and create a palette you know I go here pick a green that I like scribble it and then go okay let's uh, make it a little bit darker so we make the hue a little colder okay make it a little darker you make the hue a little colder make it darker we make the queue a little colder and then that would be you know maybe we go back to the the light a little lighter a little warmer as light as possible it's like that i want to do that and then we can we can define like a proper nice looking pixel art game and i want to like ideally do away with these borders i i we were doing this because we were sticking to the game boy palette but honestly, I really prefer having like a dark color for our, the outline, if we were to have an outline, rather than just having like black. I think it like immediately looks better. Like I think that looks nicer, and obviously it sticks to the background, so it's not the best color to use. But I think this blends nicer. So I think we'd redraw. I'm thinking if we're, restoring the, if we're redrawing the sprites anyway, why not consider a new style? What's wrong with using 24 by 24? Like, I know it's not common, and I know old games obviously had the limitation where tile sets would have been 8 by 8, 16 by 16, 32 by 32. But 24 by 24 is like a nice little, like, middle ground where we'd be able to fit, like, you know, a fair number on the screen. Something like that. By a fair number. So it might be something we need to, need to really think about. Here we go. Just plopping that down. That seems like a lot more is going on than if we were to have this many 32 by 32 sprites. But 16 by 16 suddenly seems like way too small to really have anything going on at this resolution. What do you think, chat? I kind of like this is like this is 24 by 24, 32 by 32, 16 by 16. I think 24 sort of fits in. And it's a nice like divider by two. It doesn't fit into 64 by, it's not like a multiple of two, which is kind of stupid, but I like the number 24. And the whole screen itself is, um, let's have a think. The play area here could be 224, which I don't think that 224 divides by 24, does it? It doesn't quite. What's um 24 times 10? I know it's stupid, 240, right? Yeah, that's the size of the window. Two, 24 times 9. 216. If the screen window were 216 by 216, maybe. How would that look? I don't think it would look too different, would it? 216. So if the screen were more like this... Uh, select inverse and then it's just... Uh, delete this. Whoops. Wait, hang on, this is a different layer, isn't it? Alright. What did I say? 216. Let me get my pen out. 240x... That can't be right. 220x220. 220 or... 216x216. 216. This would fit... Uh, 9, 24x, 24 tiles. What 
I can't believe you knew my age. It's incredible. I think it's too late for me to think about this right now. Like, literally, in terms of human time. But it's something I want to give consideration to. Because I think the game should get an art style and then stick to it. And I want it to be more of like a consistent pixel art game rather than whatever we really had going on here. You know, like, these, these are cool, but they just... Something's off. They're too bright. They're too saturated. I want... I want something a bit more muted that uses saturation to show importance, you know, like power-ups could be highly saturated or the boss, whereas stuff like the background and enemies could be less saturated and, and darker. I want, I want to play around with that as like a design, because I've, I've mentioned I find like Overwatch really hard to look at sometimes because everything's as bright as possible. Like everything, they've just gone to the top right of this window, maxed out saturation, and like this is like... This is probably like what D.Va looks like, probably, right? Like this colour. Like bright, bloody pink. And I don't like that. I think games should games should use everything to their advantage. And we're, we don't really have... Um, we don't have actual restrictions in hardware here. I'm not writing this to work on a Game Boy. I could. I'm not going to. So what we're doing is stylizing. So we can pick a limited palette, you know, if we have 30 colors or something and maybe five shades and we try and come up with a proper little palette, like, you know, we have some stuff, I don't know, I'm not really drawing anything of importance, but, you know, have you ever seen these sorts of little palette designs where you can see how palettes sort of link together and how you might like try and pick the nearest shade but you only have like a few of some color, like maybe you've only got like one yellow and one orange, but you've got a lot of shades of blue and your game ends up looking kind of cool because you use a lot of stuff with a blue color. Something like that. You ever seen these sorts of things? You might want like red to really stand out, so you just have one really bold red. And then you have like a vague white, but it's not quite white, it's like a little off. And a vague black, but similarly it's not quite exact. I think this is like the Android background black, I think. Funny. A limited palette like that's cool. Where you have to say, if I'm going to use a green, I have to use this green. And that's it. That sits with what we did before. I'm saying nonsense right now, but hopefully hopefully you're following with what I'm saying. I want to... Maybe we should like... Let's write that down. We should make some mock-ups, right? Create some mock-ups. Because we didn't really have any mock-ups before. And we can use that to, like, experiment with game size before we actually, like, spend a bunch of time writing a bunch of sprites, you know? <laughs> Very good one. I think we should do a lot of prototyping. I, I want to prototype, like, prototype up the wazoo. I want to test things like the twin stick shooter. Different like scaled sizes of window, 16 by 9, 4 by 3. I want to do a bunch of prototyping before we actually like make anything or like commit. Because it might turn out that 24 by 24 pixels for a sprite is perfect. Um, I like the idea that like the backgrounds could be like shaders. But we have like a few options, right? Oh shit, Necrophantasia. We could either have like 3D-ish shaders. But oh, that's a pain in the ass. But look nice. Or we could have like mostly black. With um what do you call it in Warhammer? Scatter tiles. Is it called scatter tiles? Scatter terrain? Where you make like little houses and buildings and you have those fly past. This would like prevent need for uh, outlines. Good for readability. Might look a little plain. Uh, could use uh, low texture psych. I don't know how spell psych. Psych. Whatever. Psychedelic backgrounds. We could have something like Earthbound, you know? Like. 
or main menu. You know, like something that's behind you as a background, wobbling and wibbling and spacey and stuff. But, you know, don't actually take any time or effort to generate. You need to be part of this. Bloody layers. Pop this up here. Let's actually move this all down here. Goodbye, page. Like that. All right. I want to experiment because I like the idea that everything is pixel art. Maybe we don't use shaders for anything but like the main menu and the shaders could be heavily pixelated and look really cool. Um, but the actual game itself could be very clean and readable. You know, you'd look at the screen, you know exactly where your player is. If the background here was black or a dark gray, you'd really be able to see where your player is, right? We could just have the game take place at night, you know? Um, we could, like, experiment with lighting. I'm going to write that down, actually. Because something I really like is um, N64 lighting. Uh, maybe game takes place at night. You know, like Imperishable Night. Um, elements like bullets, power-ups, glow. Maybe have a nice coloured lighting system like N64. Because there's some... N54. <laughs> some colours in N64 games look sick. Right? Let me try and find like... Snowboard. Or like uh, Banjo... Kazooie. Like... Coloured... I don't know if I can find a screenshot of like coloured ice. But like, I love pre-baked coloured lighting. I don't know if I can find an example on Google. Banjo... Banjo-Kazooie, uh, ice. Or maybe Snowboard Kids is easier. Snowboard Kids. Snowboard Kids, uh, ice. There must... There must be a picture. Not actual kids snowboarding. N64 game. I don't know if I can find a screenshot. But... I mean, okay, there's some screenshots i got to show you a lot, right? Take a look at this. This is beautiful, right? This? This looks so pretty. I love that. That's irrelevant to what I was about to say. Oh, so does this. Like this? Snowboard Kids uses great example. I mean, I could leave these in as like examples, right? But this is a great example of saturation, right? The player is as red as it gets. The HUD, bright, saturated, but the background, desaturated. One sort of one color, but separate enough that you can tell apart things. Similarly here, like the skybox is saturated, but this is part of the screen you're never going to get to. The HUD has like a black outline, so it's legible. And there's nothing of importance here anyway, so it's okay. Graphically, it's fun. I want to get... This kind of shows what I mean. It's not really what I mean. But you see here where like this lamp has this lovely pre-baked, like, yellow glow. Is this like the sequel? I haven't played Snowboard Kids 2. I love this. I want to find more. More examples. Uh, this is kind of... It's not really what I've got in my mind. It's hard to find what you need. It's such a specific screenshot I'm looking for. I doubt anyone's taken it. I'm just scrolling. Snowboard Kids is on the N64. You see here, different coloured lighting. I think this is cool. I'd want... In fact, I mean, I could make a game like that, right? I could have, like, a 3D level. I could learn, like, some super basic Blender. Really basic. Just, like, polygons. And I could make the level, like, a Snowboard Kids level. Where you, like, fly through it. And it has, like, this lovely baked lighting. You see here it's, like, yellow. A white lighting. A little bit of pink. Which is actually this screenshot here. This lighting here is similar to the lighting under here. Um, I just, th I just think it's such a pretty looking game. No one ever talks about it. This was, um, Atlas. Atlas made this game. I think they went on to make, like, Persona or something, right? Crazy, right? It's the N64, yeah. 
This was the first snowboarding kit. That's the first snowboard game on a on a Nintendo console as well, uh, which is quite a niche, but it's it's correct. <sighs> I like that super tux car. <laughs> but you know, just take a screenshot. Just take like a chunk out of this. Can I like select? Can I generate a? Um, can I generate a palette from this? I thought there was a way to make a palette out of what you've selected. This? Hang on, let me make a new page for this. Palette from the Sprite. There you go. These colours are cool. You were too young to play in 64. You played Mario in 007, but that was about it. Yeah, it has some bangers. Can I sort this somehow? I mean, I guess I could manually sort it. Somehow. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know how I'd do that. I just thought that palette looked nice. It had some nice, nice obvious differences between walls and the floor. And then obviously it's a snowboarding game because the snow would be white. But like, it's really clear what's going on here. It's really clear where your player is, which is really important on a game like on, an, on the N64 with how little fidelity you've got. This might even be 640 by 480 at native. I think it is. So this resolution here is actually what WoHo was originally running in. And I feel like we could have a 2D sprite game in like half that, right? Like that, that works as a resolution, doesn't it? This character here is only like 64 by 64. If you were to halve him, that's 32 by 32. I'm also thinking like, should I just make it so the HUD is over the game? But I kind of hate that. I hate, I hate the idea of a bullet hell where the HUD would e like ever cover part of the screen. Small slash. Yeah. Just stuff to think about for next time. Like, I, I, I want to do, like, designs of my own time and, and thoughts about this. But I just I wanted to put it on paper and put it on stream so you can see what I'm thinking about. And we have some places to start, right? We need to have a player system. We need to have an entity system. I need to consider writing how the boss is going to work. Are they they're going to stick to this gimmick? Am I going to have a roguelike game mode where you run through it again and your character gets more powerful as you go through? Probably not. But it's, I like roguelites. I want to include everything as a roguelite. Can I somehow implement this as a card game? Every game is a card game. Really. I like this idea of all the different gimmicks per level, though, because it, it means you can choose something, right? You could have, like... I should write down as I'm writing, even if it's not useful, right? Gimmick thoughts. Did I have a part for that? Didn't I? Here's another mechanic thought, right? Like, lava level? Where, like, there's the Genshin boss. Uh, is it Signora? Where, like, um, too hot? Go to cold thing. Vice versa. I like that mechanic. I think that's sick. Where, like, you might have a fire and ice level. Like, where, like, you need to constantly try and... You know, you might have a temperature somehow, and you have to, like, try and mitigate that, otherwise you just die. So you're, like, forced, you know, like, manage temperature meter. That's not how you spell meter. Um, it, like, forces player to uh, move out of comfort zone. Like, you'd be forced to go into bullets, into the bullet hell happening above you. Just to try and hit the, like, cold patch or something. Am I wearing programmer gloves? These are fluffy fingerless orange gloves because it's cold card game but the bullet hell doesn't pause when you play cards there you go lava ice i think that's neat i don't know what the power-ups could be it could be just be like last ignora where there's like a fucking fire butterfly you need to hit could there be elements in this game somehow i don't know if that would overcomplicate things but could you have like 
fire moves that do more damage to grass type enemies. You know how in like Smash Brothers, like Bulbasaur takes more, no, Ivysaur takes more damage to like Falcon Punch because it's fire type. Could I? Could like the easy character have like fucking water move built in and it like makes the early game easier because they're all fire type enemies or something? I don't know. I'm not thinking like Genshin, right? You have like elemental shields and stuff. But that might be over com overly complicated for this. Why not add a character that just does that specifically? Mm. Like a difficult... Yeah, like the gimmick character could be like an elemental switching thing. I could write that down. I mean, that could also be on like the tough character, right? The tough character could have like um, element switching as well. Different attacks for different enemies. And this could just be on like the, uh, could be on the focus. So actually, um, like Imperishable Knight. So Imperishable Knight Toho has a mechanic where if you're unfocused and you're moving around at normal speed, your bullets hit, uh, your bullets hit everything, I think, if I'm remembering this correctly. You can hit every enemy, every boss, and it might be like a homing attack or whatever. And then if you focus mode, you can only hit, no, I think it's the other way around. I don't remember, whatever, however it works. Like when you focus, you have a different character basically. And when you unfocus, you have the other character and you switch between them by holding and then you move a bit slower and they can hit different enemies to the other character. Electro becomes a thunderbolt shooting thunderbolts. Yeah. But then I could say that that's like an extra mechanic that isn't necessary. If you pull off the like elemental thing correctly, it like speeds up the game. And if you do it incorrectly, it slows it down. So it's sort of like a skilled player thing. Um, let's write that down. Um, bonus for correct. Punish for fail. So it's like a benefit for player skill. You know, something like that. I like that. Let's move some of this shit down, actually. Or let's move this up to the right. Rhythm character game. Yeah, but that, that could be on, like, the, the difficult character, right? Like, if you're good, you play this character. And it's like, if you time everything just about right and you're switching correctly and dodging and using your shield, you'll get through the game quick and get a lot of points. But if you just want to beat the game, same difficulty, you could use this one that has, you know, one attack. And it's it homes, but it does little damage, and you can dodge easily. Helps you, lets you learn the game without having to worry, and then you slowly, you know, move up. This could even be like a difficulty switcher, you know. This could be. Because this, this would like, um, make it easier to make. You know, um, balance character instead of having four different versions of game i don't know if this isn't gonna write this isn't gonna fit okay hang on this is looking like my brain now nice and messy so like the idea yeah like melting from nuclear throne kind of yeah where it's like you die really quickly but like um i'm thinking like normally toho has four levels four difficulties right you have easy, where bullets are relatively slow, patterns have a lot of spaces in them, and you can basically just listen to the soundtrack. There's normal mode, which is like the standard mode you'd normally play. Bosses have their normal patterns, it's a little difficult, the game has like a nice difficulty curve as you go through and the end boss is really quite tough, and it's like a good learning experience. And then you have hard and lunatic, which will use a different, different enemy sets like different patterns to the first one like hard and lunatic often have like their own patterns for bosses to easy and normal and then the difference between hard and lunatic is normally like bullet velocity and maybe a couple extra patterns that are a bit more dense you know like a might become um instead of having to write loads of different versions of the game i could make it so you pick the character and that's your difficulty right where the easy to learn character is easy to get through the game and then the more skilled character you play, the game becomes harder, but faster if you're good and impossible if you're bad. That would save me a ton of time. <laughs> so it might be really worth considering. 
Because in the in Woho, it was really an afterthought. We were like, oh, we need a difficulty, right? Let's just throw one in. But I like this idea where, like, you know, the secret gimmick character, I don't know what they do. It would just be like a fun, weird way to play through the game. Maybe the weird character is like a... Maybe they're like the roguelite that uh, improves over game. You know, that could be like somewhere we throw in all our like weird extra gimmicks they haven't quite thought through. The secret character, you know? Stage one, they're weird, and then every time you beat a boss, you can pick a different power up, and your character gets different as the game goes on. And this could be like, the secret character could, could be the roguelite I wanted, where like you just play that every run. After you've unlocked him, you just use him every run, and you hope you get something cool. But then again, maybe everyone would just wish they could play that from the start. I don't know. I don't know. But then it would be worth unlocking because you get the game, right? I really like bullet hells. There's not enough of them, dude. There's really not. But let's let's continue on that trend. Um, this is the cool one. Rogue like that improves over game, you know, power ups after a boss. There's some cool shit we could do there. I mean, the skilled character could be melee and summons. I don't know. That's a thought. Well, anyway. Maybe the easy character has a summons. Maybe this could have some summons that hit enemies for you. I like this. Um, this, how do I highlight this? Let's use like this color and just put it on the bottom there. That could be like a big part of the game, right? I like that. That's really cool. I like this, by the way, this like stream we've been doing today. Like I've been thinking and it's, it's really fun. Like it's fun to think and chat. And it's like really quick to write something down. You don't actually have to implement it. We can just say it. And now we've we've done all this work without even realizing it. Look at all this. We've got like these plans written down and like thoughts. And we've got we've got like goals, right? We have like some more technical details here and then some more like overarching things. I'm having like an idea forming slowly in my head of this like multi-stage game where like you start off, you pick your character, you go through, there's like a vague something story that like doesn't really matter, but it's there for the lore enthusiasts in chat. Um, and then as you get it, as you beat it, you get better and better because the bosses don't really change and you become more confident and you can play the harder characters. And maybe you need to beat the game as this character to unlock the secret. I don't know. Maybe you unlock the characters one at a time, like a tutorial. Let's write that down as well. Um, maybe you unlock one at a, maybe you unlock one at a time. Like Slay the Spire. So you don't feel overwhelmed. Will you be able to read that tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, this is all in my brain. These aren't, I mean, some of these are new ideas, but like, yeah. I think this is fine. It's not, I know this isn't Obsidian or whatever. I can't like, I haven't tagged this and gone through it, but like, I've organized it somewhat. A little bit. Any secrets planned? There have to be secrets. There has to be some secret, but I don't know how I'd implement it. There's the hidden character. Like a dev room. No, because, um, I mean, the vague mechanic of the game will still be like Woho 1, where it's sort of like, you know, it's like a rail shooter. We'd have like, if you, you can think about the game, like it's a really, really tall. Oh, God. That didn't even draw, did it? Hang on. Uh, let me try and draw this. Think about the game like it's a really, really tall corridor, right? Basically. This looks weird. And the, like, window that you're looking at to play... Is this even showing up on stream? Yeah. Um, this is basically just slowly moving up. This isn't how it's programmed, but functionally, you know, your character's slowly flying up. You know, they start down here, they slowly fly up, enemies spawn in along these points, they keep flying up, they hit a mini boss, they fight the mini boss in place for a bit, and then they beat the mini boss, and then they fly up, end of the level, fight the final boss, end of stage. I mean, I could rewatch the stream, yeah. 
I think I understand what I'm thinking about. I was able to remember what I was thinking about like four or five, three, two, three, however many years ago. Woho. I'm sure I can think about what I thought about today. This is sort of how the game is. It's on, it's, it's on a rail. So I don't necessarily know how beating as, as like the character that does a lot of damage. The difficult character. I don't know how that would speed up the game. It would speed up the bosses because they die faster, but maybe every time you kill a stage enemy it pushes you forward to the next hurdle. Maybe the game could be balanced as like hurdles that you need to overcome. You know how in like Isaac games you go into like a room and then you fight enemies and the doors lock. And then you beat the enemies and you go to the next room and the doors lock and you fight the enemies they unlock. Hey Ice Block. Each enemy accelerates you. Ooh, maybe. That's, that's a really good idea actually. Um, making game faster for skilled players. We have a few ideas, right? Ideas. So, I like your one. Uh, killing enemy accelerates you onwards. So if you kill them all quickly, boom, 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 you go to the next patch quickly. Go to next patch of enemies quickly. Whoops. But... Now there's lots of enemies. Can you deal with it? You know, like if you're good, fine. Kill like a hundred enemies. Can you do it? Like, why not? Maybe you can. Maybe the game goes between check marks. This could be a really nice way to design it, right? So just think about it like a timeline, right? Instead of it being time-based, it's check mark based. Right? I really like this actually. Start. Mid boss. I like the mid boss idea where you'd like introduce a gimmick. It is surprising and because there's a lot of thoughts, right? You're using your raw imagination. There's nothing on the screen. Like this is basically MS Paint. But it's like really fun to experiment, right? But you'd have like chips soon? Ten minutes. Hell yeah, Chris. I smell ch I'm so hungry. I can't wait for chips. We've got curly chips, chat. Oh, they've got paprika on them. I can smell them. I'm so hungry, dude. You can have some chocolate if you like, Chris. Are you eating that or am I eating that? What's this? Oh, it's a present. It's a little chocolate. Oh, you can't see that because of my green screen. You see how I'm see-through, chat? Isn't that exciting? Sorry, chat, I'm chewing. I don't think you want to listen to me chew, do you? Oh, shit, I skipped five. Hang on. Hmm. Okay. Here's the idea then, right? The original plan we'd made... Hey Pyromantic, thank you for the raid. How are you? Sorry, I'm full of chocolate now. I can't talk. Um, the original design we had was where the game would be along a set timeline, where at zero milliseconds these enemies spawn. 500 milliseconds this happens. 2,300 milliseconds this happens. And then it's the same every time. Because that's how Toho does it basically, right? You go through the, the game in a set pattern. I'm thinking we don't do that. I'm thinking we do it in a, like a dynamic way. Where like, if you're good and you kill stuff quickly, the gaps between... You get less breathing room, but you can like slam between these like spawn waves really quickly and speed to the boss. Even though it's like a rail shooter. But if you're a little bad and you're a little slow, maybe you take a little longer to kill stuff. 
So that would like introduce some player skill and programming wise, instead of having to to actually plan out timings for things, I could just say this is the first, this is the second, this is the third, blah, blah, blah. When the first is dead, give the player a few seconds grace period, spawn the second. A few seconds grace period, spawn the third. Blah, 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 blah. Get this. I could even tie this to like a background change, right? So this could be like BG1. Background 1. This could be background 2. Background 3. 4. 5. 6. 7. For example. And that could be like a way to sort of time the pace of the game as well. So if the game starts off in like a grassy grove and then it suddenly goes over trees and then you fly up, you see a mountain in the distance, you slowly approach it, the mid boss gets you midway, you defeat it, you go to the mountain, you start climbing the mountain, snow appears, it starts snowing, snow heavily flurry, you're in the eye of the storm, you fight the boss, kill the boss. Could it amaze it if you made it like Amazing Kirby the Amazing Mirror part background where it fades into a gradient. Dude. Kirby Amazing Mirror. I fucking love that game. Gradient background. Do you mean like this thing? Can't be. Based on how many enemies you see. I don't I think I don't think I quite know what you mean. I do love Amazing Mirror, don't get me wrong. Colours. You're thinking about the end of the level. The thing where you jump. Like you do like the little parrot and the little jump. You go further into space as you go, yeah. I know what you mean. The yeah. I mean that's just like every Kirby game has that at the end pretty much. It's like a like a get a new life system. Maybe. But um yeah, I mean, this could be fun, right? So, like, programming-wise, right? Let's say this, let's call this example, like, segmented game. Segmented spawning. That's what we call this. We have, um, set number of enemy waves per stage. New wave equals new background. Maybe dynamic music effect, you know? If it's a MIDI, maybe we, you know, add, remove uh, parts of track. No, or um, add reverb ETC. I described here something nice, right? Let's just write that down, you know? Grass, forest, distant mountain, approach, I liked this. I've, this is like in my head, like vividly. Uh, foot of mountain, climb snow some, climb loads, top eye of storm boss. I just, I have this really vivid image right now of how this would look. And I'll lose it. I'm sorry, future Ulan. But maybe you have a similar image to me, chat. Can you imagine? Imagine this, right? Background, 3D. Maybe, could be sprites, but 3D. You're really speed, you're flying over this, like, field. Whoosh, enemies come flying in, you beat them. And your character moves, you know, you keep moving forwards, the background. Suddenly forests appear and you're flying over forests. You beat the next wave. You look, the, pa the camera sort of pans up a bit and you see a mountain. You're flying towards that. Um, obviously, the, the mountain doesn't move. <laughs> it just stays parallax, but the trees continue moving underneath, like a parallax effect. You beat the next enemies, the mountain comes into view. You fight the boss, you climb, more and more snow come up. That's just an example. This is not an image I had in my head when I was doing Woho originally, by the way. We had like a general grassy first level, but I had no idea in my head how I was going to progress it. When you boss spawns, do you plan to muse the music for a second and move the music and then make it louder? I don't know, because something I love, right? Some of the Toho games do this, where the music is perfectly matched to the level. Because, because the game doesn't use this system, because Toho is on a rail, the music will fade. 
the background will clear, there'll be no enemies, and then you'll like burst through the darkness into some amazing like s sky landscape and the music will go vroom. Toho games are really good at that. Like um, PCB, Perfect Cherry Blossom, has the stage where you fight the rhythm, the lyric, the prison rivers. And you sort of, there's another, there's another one. Um, maybe it's 10 Desires. I don't remember. You fight like Sega or someone and you go up to these big doors and then they open up after you beat it and the music changes and it's really cool. PCB, that's right. Terraria bosses. I don't know. Anyway, uh, set number of enemies by wave. Um, faster you kill enemies, faster next wave spawns. Um, just, just like that. Tie various things to waves. Um, fun. Pog. <laughs> I like it. I, 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 I'm, got, I'm getting such a good image in my head chat. And the best part, right, is we can look at this design. We're being creative today. We can look at this design another day and start writing programming classes, you know? We'll write a level holder. We'll write a an object to describe how these segmented stages would look. This I really like, because this means my level editor. I could write, instead of having to write in the level editor and hold this whole thing in my head of a stage with enemies whizzing around boringly, I could make my little map generator here, right? Where you pick what's going on. And each thing that you generate here on this timeline, because this could be relative, right? This timeline, as you're, you're deciding where enemies go or where they spawn. This doesn't have to be at zero seconds, at two seconds, at four. This could be four seconds since the last enemy, or multiply that by difficulty. Maybe on difficult stages, enemies spawn more often, or something. Let's write that down. Um, time could be uh, relative instead of absolute. Uh, time since last uh, keyframe instead of at x seconds. I think that's how we did WoHo originally. Things were since last keyframe. Um, Time could be multiplied by difficulty, so enemies spawn more, whatever. Is everything generated at runtime of the level, or does it generate three seconds into the future? Um, the level as a whole would just be a really fucking long text file, right? Representing some JSON, probably. In the JSON, I imagine there would be a little holder for each spawn wave, one for the mini boss, one for the boss. Maybe some extras. And all of that would be held in memory. This whole object wouldn't be more than like a megabyte. Like, hold everything in memory. We we live in an age where I could... The entire game will probably be loaded at launch. Like that. It, this is not a difficult level to, uh, to store. This is not a lot of data. And there's a lot of interpolation going on. Like we're doing keyframes and relying on like Bezier curves to, to fill in the gaps. Where did the last 22 minutes go? I thought it was like 11 o'clock. It's not, it's like 20 past 11 if I happened. I was gonna finish, I got excited by this. But this is cool, because this is really programmable, right? This is a lovely object, you know? We don't have to think about it any more exact than that. We just have an enemy spawner and we could shuffle it around for balance. Makes everything really simple. I can see how this could be implemented as an object, right? Like you have an enemy spawn wave object class, you know. Mid-boss is an exact part of the level. We'd have like a, um, we could have a, like a choreographer. <laughs> How do you spell choreographer? We could have like a director, right? And the director would have a list of actions for the level and it would know like uh, what the current uh, scene is. You know, is it uh, enemy fight one, enemy fight six, mid boss, cut scene, etc. This song's good. And that could, on a very like top level, that could decide when to start the next thing. 
Kind of do funky things like the PCB stage 3 or in stage 4 with the whole stage as you chasing down a boss through various encounters. It could be- dude, let's write that down. I've been thinking about all these different like gimmicks. Maybe a stage where like you chase the boss through different encounters. I like that. That's cool. I like that. I like that. Introduce boss early. Comes back at the end to fight you. You know, they like throw a bunch of mobs at you. Try to slow you down until then with mobs. Maybe, maybe some enemy spawn waves are just spell cards they throw. You know, maybe they like throw down like a bomb or something and that's like the enemy wave. Good night, CD. This whole thing could also be shown in the HUD. Like, I don't know if it would, but this could be a timeline in the HUD. Just saying. Maybe we could show like a little... Don't know if we would. Eh. You know, it, it's not really necessary, but it could be. Like a loading bar. Show you when like you need to prepare for a mid boss. And this uh, number could vary per wave. Per stage. I'm not saying it has to be like eight, for example, but it's just an example. It's just an example. Anyway, this is some good top level stuff we've been thinking about. Are you happy with this chat? I think it's it's time we cut it off for today, otherwise we'll be talking for hours. But do you did you enjoy today's stream? Do you do you feel like you took part in something cool? Do you feel I feel like we've made some excellent progress here. Like this is coming along really nicely. I think I've got like a clear idea in my head of what we could do next, where we could start, what we want to implement. Flowchart's fun. Your ideas have been cemented, and we can come back to this a lot. I don't. I think next stream we'd probably. I don't know if we'd continue with this, or I'd do some little sprite work. We'd do some prototyping. I don't think we start on the game quite yet. I think we gotta we gotta lay down some like prototypes early. Crack out Game Maker or something, and get it get it cracked out quick. I don't think so. I think we'd make prototypes in SDL to try and practice with that. You enjoyed it. It seems interesting to learn from. I think so. Make sure to come by next time. I'd like to set this palette stuff out as well, but this is a little later on. We can use dev art until then. I want to make sure I've got fun gameplay first, and I think this... This is a fun game we've designed here. This... I would really enjoy this. If this was finished. Like a bullet hell that gets harder based on the player you're, you're playing as. Every stage has like a unique gimmick, like a, like a Pokemon gym trainer. Like a different game, you know? But not complicated. The gimmick would be something small, like the boss would be red and you'd have to walk through a red tile. But different enough per stage to keep it exciting. As long as the bosses are good, don't worry. I'm sure the bosses would be great. Music needs to be good as well. Like Undertale combat. We've made Undertale. We're making Undertale, okay? That's it. Oh shit, that's a good idea. Like bullets that you need to stay still to move through. Remember that. Put that in here. Bullets you need to stay still to not hit. Uh, blue bullets in Undertale. I like that mechanic in Undertale. I think it's cool. And uh, bullets you have to shield parry. You know. You know, big waves, etc. Like things that you can't just uh, dodge. I've got an idea, and I think like if we can get this done well, like with proper little particles and feedback and stuff, being able to like dodge roll perfectly over a bullet, like a like an R wing, or like whatever we decide, or like shield parry at the right exact second could be really satisfying. But the shield might only last three hits, so the player isn't just going to sit there spamming it. They have to know when to time it to maximize points. I'm going to write that down actually quickly. Um, where did I write the shield thing? Oh god, it started. Um, three hits, maybe? ETC? Um, different bullets equals different score bonus. Skilled players save it to waste on high point scores. 
bad players use it on hard patterns. So like you're basically giving up your like save mechanic. Like there might be a really tough pattern, but if you could just dodge it, you know that parrying that isn't going to give you a lot of points. Whereas a big old blob that's really slow and easy to dodge, if you parry that perfectly, you get a bunch of points. So you have to basically give up your shield. Anyway, yeah, we should stop. We should stop. Let's go to bed. Did you all enjoy the stream today? I hope so. We'll be back tomorrow with something different. I hope you enjoyed it. I am going to host Spirit. He's playing well. Go give him a hello. How the fuck do I type his name? Spirit plus slash raid spirit plus. Go give him a hi. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go eat chips. Shanghai, 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 Horai, 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 France, Holland, Tibet, Kyoto, London, Russia, Orleans. Yeah, alright, good night.